All right, everybody, we're getting ready to go live here in just one second. Um, go ahead and listen to the music. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Captain Mono's Any Corner. It is Friday, I almost said Monday, uh, Friday, March 2nd, 2012. This is episode number 14, where we go ahead and we take a look at the, all the indie games that are out there and uh, any type of indie game news that's happening. For instance, next week it is GDC, which also means it is time for the Independent Game Film, uh, <laughs> Independent game film Festival. Independent Game Festival, uh... So there's over, I mean, I've, I've said it on the last couple episodes, uh, so I won't go into too much detail on that again, but just be aware, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, uh, it's Independent Game Festival coming up next week, and we'll talk about that more uh, on next week's episode, see who won, and uh, see what's going on with that. <clears throat> uh, we're starting a little bit early uh, this Friday, it's, it's 5 o'clock instead of the usual 7 o'clock uh, start time. That is because I just wanted to get it done today. Um, I kind of want to get my weekend started a little bit early, so we're going to start this show a little bit early. Um, and also, there's talk of a massive uh, rainstorm coming through, so I don't want the thunder to start coming over through the, uh, through the mic here, um, which is possible. So you might be hearing some, uh, some rain right now. It is kind of uh, it's raining pretty, pretty bad out right now. So I apologize if that comes over uh, on the sound, but yeah, just got to deal with it, Mother Nature and all that. But let us stop talking about the weather and get to the games. What we're going to talk about today, uh, on pretty much every single episode, I have talked about games that you buy through Steam or you buy uh, through, through a person's website or anything like that. Today we are going to take a look at a couple of free-to-play games. Not free-to-play as in you play up to a certain point and then have to spend money in order to unlock more things. No, no. These are strictly um, free-to-play uh, and browsers. Um, and this particular game that I'm getting ready to play right now recently, uh, as of this week, in fact, um, got put on Steam called Realm of the Mad God. Uh, it's essentially a co-op role-playing game shooter with an 8-bit art style. If uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty fun actually. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at it here in a second. But essentially, it's uh, it's a role playing game. You play as a certain class uh, in an eight bit environment, and you're just basically uh, you're playing in line with all these people, and you're going around killing stuff. Kind of like um, uh, almost like a Diablo kind of a thing, where you're just uh, collecting loot and killing guys and, and leveling up things like that. The one twist with this particular game is that when you die. You die. You don't get to uh, start again. So if you have a level 50 character or however you know, however leveled you get him, um, he's done. There's no, there's no save points. There's no anything like that. It's just well, I don't want to say there's no save points, but when your character dies, he just dies. So there's that. So let's go ahead, click on over here, Realm of the Mad God. I'm actually playing the Steam version of it right now. Um, just uh, just because it's easier for me to load it up from Steam. So let me go ahead, get that out of the way, turn on the sound, and kill the sound a little bit because it's a little loud in my headphones. So here we go. Um, this game is made by Wild, Sh Wild Shadow Studios, and like I said, it's just simply a... Uh, um, class-based role-playing game. As you can see, uh, I have just started playing it. That's something else that I'm trying out today, is going in completely cold. 
Uh, I got through the tutorial right before the show started, but uh, as you can see, everything is pretty much locked, so you're just stuck with the wizard to start out with. But um, as you can see, there are certain unlock conditions, so uh, to get the priest, you reach level 5 with a wizard. Uh, get a warrior, you reach level 5 with a rogue, so depending on what you actually want to play, uh, you know, there are the, the conditions. So to get an archer, you know, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new character. And um, basically this is it. I mean, we're walking around here, and they give you little uh, little notes as you're playing. Go to the Nexus, which is the hub, uh, the hub world for everybody. And as you can see, there are a ton of people playing this game. And uh, the co-op is just pick up and go. It's um, very much like an MMO in that fact, where if you need help, you just start typing, uh, typing to everybody that's in the in the room here. But the uh, the point of the game is to go into these portals uh, and as you can see this is a beholder so each portal has a mad god that needs to be destroyed um, in order to clear the level and so uh, as you can see these uh, they, they show you the number of people that are in and if, if it's full or not um, so obviously 85 people to a realm and uh, let's just keep checking out the scenery here uh, this is Pretty much it. It looks like for right now. I'm checking up. They got the mini map up here. Um, combat is pretty pretty straightforward. You just hold down the mouse button and uh, that shoots you. Gonna, oh damn! Let's wait for this beholder to, to open up here. And hopefully we get in. There we go. We'll go in right to the beholder and now we start. And what'll happen is is um, these little quests will pop up. So now we're supposed to be taking out the scorpion, uh, scorpion queen. Oh, and so me and Mr. Buttface here, <laughs> uh, we're gonna go right towards it and see what we can take out. Now, if I could hide that, that would be great. Um, there we go. Uh, and that's the thing is you don't have to group up. It's not like an MMO in the fact that you have to group to gain um, group. Um, group experience or anything like that, you basically just have to be in the same area as everybody else. So it just makes the pick up and go factor um, really easy. And it's not like you have to make sure that you, uh, you know, that you get a team together before you actually start. You can just wander to an area. Uh, if you're looking up at the mini map, the yellow, yellow dots are people and red dots obviously are enemies. And so we got a quest right now to take out the Scorpion Queen again. And as per the usual, you get the red and the blue uh, bars here for your life and your mana. And uh, your mana is actually used with... Uh, yeah, there we go. Good job, guys. Um, your mana is actually used for uh, spells, which are right here. Uh, so when you hit spacebar, uh, for this particular guy right now, I get a fire spray spell, which will shoot fire uh, in all directions, and that eats up a little bit of mana. So as I'm just taking out guys here, the idea too is to uh, get get deeper and deeper into a uh, into a realm. As you can see up here, uh, there are oh, and then there's these uh, these bags that pop up with loot. It's not usable by wizards, so screw it. Uh, but yeah, so you're essentially just kind of exploring, exploring the world, taking out anything that's in its path. And oh crap! And uh, the deeper you get, the harder the enemies get, and the closer you get to the... Nope, that's for an archer. Get some pirates up here, it looks like. That's a sword, we need it. And we just leveled up, so that's good. Staff imbued with potential magic fire. Uh, 10 to 25, 10, okay, we'll do that. So there we go, now we got fire. I'm not really seeing too many. Oh, here we go. Here's a big old group of guys. Let's get these guys out. And the quests randomly pop up. Um, it's not a... Ooh, gelatinous cubes. Uh, it's not a set number of things that are happening. Okay, so now i got to take out a hobbit mage. God, these guys are getting a little bit... Starting to hit a little harder, and I'm already just a little bit into this level. We'll go on right up here, take out this hobbit mage. 
Nope, oh, somebody already took him out. Okay, oops. Hang around these guys for a little bit here. Oh god. Got another scorpion queen that popped up. And like I said, I mean this is this is essentially um essentially what the game is and uh for being as simple as it is, it is uh from, from what I've heard uh, from people that have suggested I show this game, uh, it definitely gets extremely, extremely um, addicting, especially when you get into a high level, take that, um, and you start kind of really getting, whoop, you really want to start protecting your uh, your your character. Because again, that, the thing that'll happen here is I can actually return to the Nexus right now and just go into another, uh, go into another realm. Let's see what happens. Wander on. So I don't necessarily have to get to the to the ooh, to the last level uh, right away, and you actually you know you do kind of level up rather quickly. Die! There we go. Ooh, take that ring. I'll take this thing. Okay, I'm getting hit from somewhere. Um, the one thing that you do get uh, is that. When you get a large group of people, you will get a mad rush to, to get to grab loot. So you might end, actually end up uh, seeing something that you like, but you got to be extremely quick with actually picking it up and dragging it to uh, to your inventory. Let's see what else we can find here. More gelatinous cubes. We're getting a little bit closer. This is a different type of uh, boss here. Let's see what we got. Getting 5 XP. Oh, Bandit Leader. Here we go. Go there, and he's dead. 40 XP for that. That's not bad. And get a knife. Don't care about that? How fun do you find? Very fun. Whatever. Submit. That was weird. Don't think I've gotten that before, but hmm. Right, so we got another large group of enemies here. Whoa, pirate! Get 20 XP for that. Actually, should start trying to find people to get around here. Oh, crap. You know what? I'm just gonna. Dark water. All right, I'm just gonna get back to land here. Ugh. Oh, Sandsman King. That's their next quest. And so yeah, I mean, like I said, this is a nice little little game to just kind of kill some time with. You don't. There's not a whole lot uh, of investment. Um, not a whole lot of investment, um, time-wise or skill-wise or anything like that. I mean, you're essentially, you're using the keyboard to move, and then your mouse, uh, you just hold down. Here we go, got another level. I'm trying to shoot for that. Level, uh, level five so I can unlock another character. And I guess that, that, that'd be the only investment is, um, until you get to level five on certain characters, you are pretty much stuck with what you got. Um... So that's that might be a little deterrent for some. Uh, not really seeing too much uh, deviation from just the regular like the three or four guys that I've seen. I thought that there would be a little bit more. Uh, oh. Couple more, a couple more quests that would be a little more, or a couple more monsters that would be a little bit more different, a little bit harder to get through. So, we'll go through this. I like the music, man. The music's really nice. Oh, 
Oh, what the crap is that? There we go. Oh, and we got a Salamander King. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm confused now. Wow. Uh, right, right after I get done complaining about... Oh. There we go. Right after I get done complaining about not there not being enough guys, there's some tornado monsters. Who's this thing? It looks like your health regenerates too. I mean, they do give you the uh, the health potions and things like that, but uh... oh wow! So yeah, these these maps get quite uh, quite involved. It looks like What's this giant crab monster. Ugh. What's this? There are so many guys. Oh my god, here we go. And this is the realm of mad god right here. So you basically just lock, you can you can just end up locked on. Like I said, this is uh This is what happens. I mean everybody kind of gets into a what is going on? Ugh, my screen's all... Oh no! Well, I guess we're all going into this area. That was kind of weird. There was no indication that we were, whoa. That we were actually uh, going into a new area, but now suddenly, here we are. Whoa. Hey, we got to level five some point. Oh, and I'm dead. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, that was pretty cool, though. Because, yeah, like I said, uh, if you can get all 85 of the people in one realm to kind of um, to rush forward and just kind of take a whole realm, that that is pretty awesome. I do like that. Let's see, we got a class. Let's see, we got a priest now. The priest, long range, can heal himself and his allies. So we get a priest and we can start healing guys. Um, however, I think we've pretty much established what this game's about. Um, let's just try one more time. No, no, you're right. You're right. Okay. So that is Realm of Mad God. We'll kill the sound here so we can talk. Realm of Mad God, uh, made by Wild Shadow, St Wild Shadow Studios, uh, available on Steam for absolutely free. You can also check it out on their website. Um, they do have it right through there. But let's go ahead and take a look at one more game that I just found out about today. Uh, it seemed like an interesting concept. It's a free-to-play game, so I figured I would go ahead and test it out on here uh, today. Give me one quick second. Let me pop this over here. And we'll go with... There we go. Okay. So this game is called Fail Deadly. Uh, made by Third Helix uh, Games. But uh, it's actually made by a guy named Josh Sup Sutfin. I'm sorry. Sorry, butchering the name there. Um, and essentially what this is, it's a strategy game. You know what? I'm going to kill the kill the cam here. There I go. Give you the full uh, full visual here. And essentially what this is, it's a uh, strategy game that plays out by itself. You don't actually control the units um, specifically, but what ends up happening is uh, there's, there's a certain time limit that, that happens. I think it's like every four seconds. And what will happen is you place all of the buildings and all of the things um, for two armies. And the goal is not to kill the other army, but yet, but to actually escalate the conflict enough. There's a threat meter you'll see when I get this started. There's a, uh, a threat meter that will constantly be uh, building up. And what you want to do is you want to fill that threat meter all the way up because then both sides will then shoot off nuclear weapons and everybody is essentially destroyed. But that's actually the goal that you're trying to you're trying to shoot for. It's an interesting concept. Um, I'm, I'm really interested to see exactly how it goes. 
So here we go. We've got a factory that produces tanks, and you get two sides, um, and you pick which side gets the factory. So we'll go ahead and start on green. And we place it there. Now we've got another five seconds to prepare the next move, and it's a pillbox. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent one side from taking out the other side's um, nuclear we weapons. So what we'll do is we'll start off with this uh, pillbox. You know what, we'll throw another pillbox out there to help that one. This team shoots faster. Well, let's, uh, let's give Green the ability to shoot faster so maybe they can try to do a little bit more of those pillboxes. Next turn is a helipad. So we'll go here. It looks like those or the pillboxes are being ready to get destroyed. Them the riflemen, um, and then we'll give these guys riflemen just to balance it out. And as you can see right now, uh, we have a threat indicator that's starting to uh, that's starting to add up here. This essentially uh, is your score for. Uh, you'll get it for the number of um, uh, units that die or the things that get destroyed. So you basically want to take out as much. Uh, as many things as you can without actually destroying yeah, this is the airstrike I'm just going to use that right there um, without actually destroying the silo so what's happening right now is it does actually it's looking like orange is getting a bit of an advantage so we're going to try our best to oh no uh, to get green to oh to get green to withstand this threat that's happening. So this silo is under attack, and that is exactly what we want to prevent. We want this threat to increase all the way, and it's looking like it's not going to happen. Okay. So we will go ahead and retry this. Preparing the next move. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, I believe that the turns are randomized each time. It's not, you don't, you know, it's not factory, airport, or anything like that. So that's that. Airstrike destroys everything at the impact sites. Let's do that. This might not be the smartest move that I've done. going to have a little bit of an advantage with their shooting faster, so we're going to go ahead and give Orange the, the armor. But like I said, this is a, a very simple game uh, with an interesting kind of concept. It's not so much you're trying to kill everybody, it's that you want the conflict to go on long enough so that each side decides that it's a stalemate and will shoot off their nukes. Which is uh, it's something that I've never really... Uh, I haven't ever... I haven't heard of a game that's like that, and yeah, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I guess the one complaint that I would have is that this is pretty much it. This is the only level uh, that you have, so um, once you get the hang of it, I'm sure you can probably just uh, kind of burn, burn through the game easily, and uh, at that point it just becomes a thing of how... Uh, how large you can get your score going. So, you know what? Let's do that. Our pillbox is gone. Now we've got... Have these guys shoot faster. Still have the helipad, which takes out tanks. And what we'll do now is we'll have them get tanks, just to give them a little bit of advantage. Okay, right from in there. And it, the setup that I have, at least the setups are exactly the same, and since green looks like they're getting a little bit of an advantage, we'll go ahead and throw a pillbox down for orange. Um, we'll go like this. So now we're kind of, we're getting to a, an almost 
stalemate mode here. Uh, Orange looks like they're taking a little bit of a lead. So what we'll do here... Oh, that was interesting. You actually can't just sit on the move. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, we'll set this up. Put some pillboxes down. Again, another, another game that has, uh, at least to me, has some interesting uh, music. And just, I mean, it's a pretty basic art style. They're not trying to do too much here. Uh, oh. That probably was the best because now green's green's getting kind of smoked here. I forgot about the two pillboxes that orange had. So we'll just go ahead and blow them up. And these guys there. And uh, you know what? We'll blow those guys up. Give them a little bit more of an advantage. close to that thread. Uh, that thread indicator getting a little bit closer. Uh, almost, we're almost there. Oh, uh, shoot. Looks like these guys are getting a little bit more tanks, so we'll throw a hell back down there. Oh, no. This is tanks. And now that we've filled up the threat, we can start to launch sequence. Or we can keep seeing, we can keep it going, uh, just to see how long. Whoops! Just to see how long we can uh, we can keep this conflict going, how large we can get our score. But essentially, now we we have won the game. Uh, do this, do that out. And it's looking like. Orange is getting quite a bit of a lead here, so once they really start moving in, we'll go ahead and just throw the, uh, throw the silo down. And I'm going to go ahead and just start the launch. Oh, shoot. So now we have a 30 seconds doomsday, doomsday thing here. Thing. I mean, a doomsday uh, scenario. We've got, we've got 15 seconds. We're going to make sure that this all holds for 15 more seconds. 10. Wow. And there it goes. The nukes are launched. And everything is destroyed. And you technically win the game. Um, this is a little bit different uh, concept than a uh, previous game I looked at was DEF CON, where uh, everybody's going to die and you're just minimizing damage. In this one, you're actually, you want to damage as much as you possibly can. And... Now nobody can stand in the way of your nefarious plans. So yeah, so this gives you uh, your, your final stats here, exactly how many things were, were destroyed, um, how long, and you get a time bonus for keeping keeping the conflict going for as long as it can. But essentially, um, this, this is the game. We go to retry and it just starts you right back up. So go ahead and quit this. And so that, those are my two free-to-play games um, that I wanted to talk about today. Like I said, Realm of Mad God, uh, you can find it on Steam, or uh, let me s I think it's just realmofmadgod.com, I could be wrong. Nope, I am, I am right. Realm of, Mad Realm of the Mad God.com, uh, you can check it out there, or you can go to thirdhelix.com and look for Failed Deadly, made by Josh, uh, Josh Sutton. And 
that was uh, that. That's pretty much all. And the uh, the thing to remember, um, Realm of Mad God was actually suggested to me by one of the viewers, uh, so that's why this game uh, the game got shown. So if you do have any suggestions, uh, go ahead and hit me up on uh, Twitter. Uh, the tw the Twitter account is uh, Captain Amano. You can email me, and the email I address is CaptainMono at gmail.com. Or you can leave a comment in the YouTube archives. Um, one thing I did want to talk about was I am I was extremely glad to see people watching the uh, live stream I did uh, last Saturday. When I was playing old, uh, old PC games, more specifically how I burned through Wing Commander in about three hours, which... Kind of threw me off. I, I kind of figured that that game was a little bit longer, but um, I mean, I was playing it, and I got to a point where I knew where I was getting towards the end game, so I just finished it off. But I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, I'll be doing that. I'll more than likely be doing that again sometime soon. Uh, again, it'll it'll be a random thing. Um, maybe an old PC game. A lot of the stuff uh, I played a lot of uh, games from GOG.com over the, over last weekend, and so we'll I'll see about trying that out again. But again, uh, if, you, if you have anything that you want me to play, whether it's an indie game, an old PC game, anything like that, let me know, and I'll uh, do my best to get it on the show. But with that, that does it for Captain Mono's Indie Corner, episode 14. You guys have a good weekend and a good week. See you back here next Friday. Um... Next Friday, and then we'll talk some, IG, uh, some independent game festival stuff. Alright! Have fun! Play games! We'll see you later. Bye!